Hello everyone, this is Paul Bertarelli reporting for AvWeb and Aviation Consumer. I'm on the ramp at Caldwell, New Jersey, and yes, it's as cold as it looks. Behind me is a Cessna 182 that's been converted to the SMA diesel. It's owned by the Paramus Flying Club, and we're going to take a demo flight in, in a few minutes. But first, here's the club's Tamaharu Nishino to explain some of the numbers. Uh, the actual conversion cost for this airplane was roughly around $80,000 uh, com compared to, say, $25,000 that it would have taken to replace it with an, uh, uh, an overhauled Continental. Our economic justification was basically that with the lower fuel burn, consistently two to three gallons less than the Avgas version, um, combined with the lower maintenance cost, we anticipated that uh, we would be able to make back on the investment in roughly seven years. The operating cost for this aircraft is roughly $110 per tack hour compared to $140 or perhaps $150 for a normal Avgas version of this aircraft. And we've had it for about 10 months now. In those 10 months, this aircraft has flown roughly 220 hours. Uh, and both the fuel burn as well as the maintenance has been roughly in line with our expectations. Hourly, there's not much difference between the SMA 182 and a stock 182. Cowling is most noticeable. There are two large air inlets and some gill louvers on the lower cowling. These have been blocked off for winter use. One thing that gets alignment's attention is there are giant Jet A placards over the fuel inlets. Since Jet A is heavier than Avgas, the club downfuels the airplane and tracks fuel status with a calibrated dipstick. And despite heavier fuel, the SMA-powered 182 has virtually the same useful load as the gasoline-powered Skylink does. Its better fuel specifics mean that it has better range on equivalent fuel volume. One big change is inside the cockpit. Gone is the Cessna stock push-pull controls, replaced by the T-handle throttle. That barber pole lever on the right there is for manual fuel injection control. Startup is car-like, just turn the key. And despite the cold temperatures, the SMA engine fired right up. Right up. Initial impression on takeoff is that the diesel is smoother than the 0470, which is a surprise considering the diesel's harsh power pulses. Climb rates and speeds are comparable to the gasoline engine. Uh, we're establishing the SMA 182 at uh, 3,500 feet, uh, currently indicating about uh, almost 120 knots. Uh, we don't have fuel flow in here, uh, but I guess uh, that would be about uh, eight and a half or nine gallons an hour at this altitude. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the temperature limitations on this. And, uh, it's, kind of, it's a little bit cold-blooded. It's cold today, but, but within limits for the airplane. Yeah, um, so right now the outside air temperature is negative 12 degrees Celsius. Um, the manufacturer has set a limitation of negative 20 degrees Celsius. Uh, below 7,500 feet. Uh, that's with the winterization kit that's uh, on this aircraft right now. Uh, above 7,500 feet, uh, we can go uh, 20 degrees Celsius below uh, standard temperature. Uh, without the winterization kit, uh, the limit uh, becomes five, uh, negative 5 degrees Celsius, up to 7,500, uh, and above that, 5 degrees below standard, up to 12,500. Uh, so the winterization kit, uh, it's a fairly simple kit uh, that basically plugs up a lot of the uh, ventilation in the cowl, uh, but gives, expands the operational envelope of this plane considerably. Like all turbocharged diesels, the SMA needs very high boost pressures, up to 80 inches on takeoff and about 65 inches in cruise. And on approach, there's no pulling it back to idle either. On uh, final approach, we're required to maintain 45 uh, inches of manifold pressure uh, to prevent any uh, flame out on uh, final approach. Uh, and once we have the field made, uh, we will then cut the power to idle, uh, dump in some flaps, and get a nice approach into landing, hopefully. Five one Romeo, clear for takeoff on runway two eight. Five one Romeo. As you can see from the foregoing video, the SMA performance is very similar to the uh, 0470 version of the Cessna 182. I find the engine very smooth. Uh, we checked the noise level and it was around 93 dB, which is uh, very quiet. Uh, climb is good. Uh, cruise is good. Uh, fuel flows about two to three gallons below what, what we'd expect to see in the 0470. Uh, so in general, the airplane operates as the 0470 does. It's got some uh, temperature limitations, which we've talked about, uh, but they're not onerous, and the club obviously has been able to work around them. So, uh, uh, Tomahara, it looks like it's been a good installation for uh, Paramus. Oh, absolutely. Um, and our members love this plane.
Um, and this plane has been uh, the most popular plane in our fleet for the last nine months. Well, thank you very much for the demo. Well, thank you. This is Paul Bertarelli reporting for AvWeb and Aviation Consumer. Thanks for watching. You can read a detailed report on the SMA converted Skylane in the February 2010 issue of Aviation Consumer Magazine at aviationconsumer.com.